Well, adaptation is one of the responses to the problem of human-induced climate change, which is to do with how do we cope with the inevitable and un uh, unstoppable impacts of climate change that are beginning to happen already and will happen for the next 10 or 20 years, even if we do reduce our emissions of greenhouse gases. So this is to do with uh, preventing or managing floods, building embankments in the coastal areas against sea level rise, uh, in ensuring water and drought prone areas. Uh, we are seeing more and more droughts, floods uh, and cyclones and hurricanes around the world and we have to deal with these. So adaptation to climate change is dealing with the impacts of climatic events like those. Well, most of the people on planet Earth are poor, living in poor countries in Africa, Asia, and other developing countries. And they have the least ability to deal with the impacts of climate change. And they happen to also be living in some of the parts of the world which are going to be most vulnerable. And so for several billion people living on planet Earth who are going to be affected by impacts of climate change and whose own greenhouse emissions are minuscule compared to rich people, it's the most important part of the climate change problem is how are they going to deal with those impacts? And for the rest of us, how are we going to help them deal with those impacts? So in the fifth assessment report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, uh, in Working Group 2, which is on impacts, vulnerability, and adaptation, there are four chapters on adaptation. The first of the four is Chapter 14, which I was a, a coordinating lead author of. It's on the uh, impacts and, and opportunities of adaptation. It's about adaptation planning. Uh, the chapter after that, chapter 15, looks at implementing adaptation, and the chapter after that, chapter 16, looks at the barriers and limits to adaptation. And the fourth of the set of four, chapter 17, looks at economics. So my chapter looks at how do we plan for adaptation. As I said, this is an issue that we're going to have to deal with, whether we like it or not, and we have to start thinking about it, both in developed countries as well as in developing and poor countries. So the main highlights of the chapter are that countries are now realizing that they have to do adaptation planning. Many of the countries have done plans, and we've cited a few of them. I'll mention the one from my country, Bangladesh, where we have a, a very significant large-scale Bangladesh climate change uh, adaptation strategy in which the government of Bangladesh is putting substantial amounts of money themselves, and we're also receiving funds from the global community. And there are hundreds of activities taking place within government, outside government, uh, many of them in the coastal areas, which are the most uh, 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 prone to the impacts of climate change, salinity, intrusion at the moment, cyclones uh, periodically, floods periodically. So a lot of disaster reduction, disaster warnings being, being put in place. That kind of thing is needed in many different countries. We have two major strategies to deal with the impacts of climate change. Firstly, mitigation. Mitigation is about reducing our emissions so that we prevent climatic change is from happening. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to prevent some level of climatic change. We can still prevent some very catastrophic uh, levels of climate change in the long run. So there's a time scale associated with the uh, impacts of mitigation. So if we do mitigation now, uh, we won't see the benefits of it for decades to come because of the lag in the atmosphere. On the other hand, in the, in the short term, there's nothing else we can do except adapt because the short term impacts are already locked in. So it's a combination of adaptation and mitigation, not an either or. We need to do both. Mitigation to prevent catastrophic uh, climatic impacts in the long run at global scale. Adaptation to prevent and deal with the inevitable impacts in the shorter term, mainly in poorer countries and in poorer communities. Private sector has a huge part to play, primarily in mitigation because it's to do with the investments in what kind of future energy structures are we going to have. If it's more of the same, depending on fossil fuels and investing in more fossil fuels, then we are doomed. Uh, we are going to cross four and a half degrees very easily if we continue business as usual. On the other hand, if the investment community changes the direction of investments, and the, we're talking trillions of dollars of investment into renewable and sustainable energy pathways, then we can actually prevent the catastrophic end of the problem from occurring. There'll be some impacts of climate change, but they won't be as bad as uh, they might be if we continue to do what we're doing. So that's the primary role of business. There are also things that business can do in the, uh, in the adaptation arena, primarily to do with insurance. The insurance companies now are realizing that uh, they may be a, a huge loser if we don't take actions to deal with climate change. And so insurance is a very good tool to pay premiums so that we uh, insure any loss and damage that might occur by paying the premiums now and we can get some compensation for when the losses actually occur in the future. 
Um, my center in Bangladesh uh, runs, it's based at a university and we run a master's program in climate change and development. We also do a lot of work at grassroots level on community-based adaptation with vulnerable communities. And we uh, host and organize an annual international conference. It so happens that this year's conference will be in April this year here in Nairobi in Kenya. It's a seven day long event where people come from all over the world, it's several hundred of them. They spend three days in groups staying with vulnerable communities and then come back to the capital and spend another four days in conference and sharing. Uh, next year, the event will be in Bangladesh. So anybody who's interested in the most vulnerable and how they are coping and adapting, because they're not sitting idle, they are actually taking actions, uh, are most welcome to find out more about it. It's called the Community-Based Adaptation Conference. The website is www.cba9.org.